Hello, happy Monday. Thanks for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And we can craft a happy life together, you guys. So, all right, tonight we are working on free as a bird, the free as a bird block right here. So this is from the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. And uh, this is, uh, it has 100 blocks in that project. And right now they're free up, up through 20 blocks. And then the rest of the 80 blocks will be in the book when it comes out uh, later this year. Pretty soon, actually, I think in a month or so, uh, the book comes out, the Splendid Sampler 2 book. So go check that out at thesplendidsampler.com. And today I thought we'd get a little further on this block. We have, we got this far last time on, uh, on Thursday and it's looking like a cute little sparrow. I love him so much. So we have to do the flower and the leaves. I thought we'd try and get those done tonight and I want to sew them on tonight. See how far we can get on, on that as well. So we still have to do embroidery on it though. And I don't think we'll get to that tonight, but uh, I, I'm trying to get these uh, at least one more block done so we can start the quilt as you go. So I'd like to do my Splendid Sampler 2 quilt as a quilt as you go project. And that's a technique where you quilt small sections of a quilt and then sew together those sections. So when you're all done, you don't have to then sandwich your quilt and sew it all together because you'll have that part, you'll have it done already. It's kind of this magical little technique and I haven't tried it yet and I'd love to give it a go. So I wanna get one more block done and then we will start on that. Uh, so I'm going to, just so you guys know, I'm gonna be out of town again. Uh, we're visiting uh, the Hubs' parents. So we'll be out of town for a little, while again for uh, Thursday and Friday. So I'm gonna miss the new block this week again. And uh, uh, the next, uh, so I'll be doing Monday through Wednesday this week, and then I'll be starting up again on Wednesday next week. And we'll have to play a little bit of catch up on the new block, I think. So uh, we'll get this block done this week. We'll have to play some catch up next week, and then we'll get uh, going with the quilt as you go. Oh, hello from West Texas, Jane. And you want to do the quilt as you go too. Yeah, it's been this mystery uh, that I've been wanting to try for a while. And you know what? I think this quilt's going to be perfect for it. So we're going to give it a go. So let's work on this block tonight and see how far we can get. Uh, thanks again for joining everyone. All right, here we go. I know, Gretchen, we are, we got to spread the family love. Yes, so we, uh, we're, I've been just all over the place this month. So after after September, I should be back here uh, for, a, for a while. So <laughs> I know I've been all over the place in uh, the last few months, but uh, it will cool down real soon here. So we have our pieces already cut out. So what we need to do yet on here um, is these two little circles and these two leaves, and that's it. And I'd love to use... Uh, the extra, like my fabric from my scrap pile here. So I've been saving scraps and I'm sure we can pull some out of here. Oh, you're gonna be um, blown away by the hurricane. Yes, I hope you guys are staying safe if you uh, have the hurricane coming. Uh, my husband just uh, found out, so my brother and his wife used to live I guess right where the storm's going. If if they still live there, they would be in that mandatory evacuation area. Uh, but you know they they moved um, a few months ago, so they're they're not there anymore. So stay stay safe, everyone. If you're if you're over there, I'm just pulling some possible pieces out of here. Um, pieces that might be big enough. Look at some of these that are all all together already. Um, these would be fun to piece together in some some other way. <laughs> All right, that's that's for a different. That's for later. Let's see what else do we got. That might be cute. Okay, so let's think about these circles uh, first. Oh, Jane, I'm so happy you like them, and I'm so happy you're you're here uh, to hang out with us too. All right, so 
this has an opportunity to like fussy cut a little thing in it. And I thought, you know, a little flower would be kind of pretty, but I almost, I've, I've saw this fabric and I almost think a little house or something would be just a teeny detail that would be pretty cute. There's a little house and a little turtle, but you know what? I think maybe the flower makes more sense still. I think we should still, let's fussy cut a flower in here. Okay, so let's pick one. I think maybe this one with the dotted lines is kind of cute because there's going to be embroidery in here and that kind of implies embroidery. So let's flip it over and I'm going to take uh, the one side off. So this is that steam -a seam 2 that has paper backing on both sides and then it's sticky. Uh, so I can just stick it down like a sticker. I don't actually have to press it all right now. So I'm going to try and center that flower. Ooh, I don't think I did a, bit of, a very good job. Ah, and it keeps moving. All right, I think that looks good. I can kind of hold it up to the light a little bit. Yeah, that looks that looks great. Okay, let's stick that there. We could press it on right away, but um, let's get some things to cut. So let's set this aside. Um, let's let's do the next piece. So what do we think this would look pretty on? I'm just kind of looking at this yellow here. That'd be kind of a crazy, kind of neat thing. So this circle, this little circle here goes on top of this circle. So I need something uh, that might not be quite big enough. Actually, it might just be big enough. Ooh, look, here's a little end here. Why don't we do that? Look, that's perfect. Okay, great. We'll use this little piece. Oh, you just put a little butterfly in yours, Dawn. That's cute. I love that idea. Yeah, this um applique, this raw edge applique where you use all these little bits. Well, actually any app applique, there's a real opportunity to fussy cut. And what that means is just like what we did here on purpose, focusing on a little area uh, in our piece, not just like willy nilly placing things. Okay, I need a scissors. Let's just get this big bulk out of the way. Okay, so we got two pieces here. Let's put these together and then we'll worry, we'll worry about the leaves next. So normally you would give this a press on your iron, but uh, since I, I'm using that steam -a seam 2, it has, it has that built-in sticker with it, so I don't really need to, but I'm thinking of doing that now. Let, let's turn on the iron just in case, uh, just because there's this little fold here. So I think maybe I do want to give these a little press right now. They're still fusible on both sides of the paper, uh, of the papers. So um, it'll fuse down, but it just has an extra benefit of sticking a little bit, which is kind of neat. All right, so let's let's just give those a fuse. That guy and this guy all fussy cut. And uh, okay, the iron's warming up, so maybe we can pick some leaves yet. I think we need something prettier or something at least brighter. Ooh, that's just selvage. That won't work. I wanted to do like in the yellow family for, for this. How about these? This might work. Should we just pick, let's just, let's have them match. I think these, let's, let's choose um, two of these spotted ones. I think that's pretty cute. So we'll do this one and this. Oh, you're in New Jersey and they keep changing if it's going to hit us. So it's going to get way up there. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize, um, I've been a little out of it lately, so I didn't realize it was getting way north too. Yes. Stay safe. All you, uh, like North Carolina peeps and stuff. Oop. Wrong side. Woo. That was a close one. I've done that before. Um, you want to go on the wrong side here. Just everywhere. I hope. Hope you guys are okay. Let us know, keep us updated. I know they're doing like mandatory evacuations in some places. All right, we'll, we'll press these on while we're at it. Oh, you're planning to quilt without power? Linda, do you have a, um, a treadle machine or are you just, are you gonna do uh, hand piecing? Well, that's, that's a great idea. That'll, that'll pass the time I'm thinking. All right, let's just give this a little press. And it just needs barely anything. We're just touching it to it. Okay, 
these guys a press and this guy a press. So now that one side should should be good to go and now we can trim these out. Hand work at the ready, exactly. Ugh. Well, good. That's something. I mean, like, that can make all the difference, you know? I mean, I haven't been through a hurricane, uh, but yeah, just when you're in a stressful situation and with a lot of time and, you know, crafting is like the best for that, for sure. All right, so I'm going to trim these out on our drawn, our drawn line right now. Okay, so this is this is gonna be our actual edge. So I'm gonna go slow and try and make this as round as I can. I'm doing just the raw edge applique technique. There's just so many tech techniques. Oh, you're using the emergency craft kit idea. Nice, Linda. Yep. <laughs> I always have a I have my uh, um, my go-to craft kit that I that I sometimes travel with, not when I'm on a plane, but other times I'll travel with, uh, that has like a bunch of just crafting tools. And then like in the car, I, I have my emergency craft kit and it's just, it's a, um, right now it is a English paper piecing project that will never ever end. <laughs> so it's, if we're stuck somewhere, then, then I know I always have a project, which is nice. Oh, you haven't had a category four hit since 1954. Oh my gosh. You're more worried about the water for up to 20 inches. Ah, yes. Stay safe and definitely keep us updated. That's, that's scary stuff. All right. So I'm going to cut this guy out and I'm just going to trim the fabric just a little bit, just cause it's, it's easier to cut without a giant piece of fabric hanging. All right. Here's the small flower or the small circle with the flower on it. <laughs> this is not gonna be a perfect circle, but that's okay. I'm going slow. I think people will look at that flower, right? Instead of how circular my circle is. <laughs> that's the hope at least, right? Okay. Yeah, I could get this little edge here a little bit better, I think. There we go. Okay, so this guy will go on here. And actually we can do that right away. I don't think I need the light table for that. Uh, so let's, let's um, cause it's just centered. Let's just scratch an X on the back here. And uh, what I'm doing now is instead of pulling the paper off, I wanna reveal that, uh, that other glue side. And instead of pulling the paper off, I'm from an edge because I just made this edge. I just cut that edge all nice. I don't want to rub my fingers against that edge because that's going to make, um, that's going to just make the edge more raw. It's going to like feather the edge a little bit. So I did a little X in the, in the middle and then I'm going to just take the paper off from the center out and that will keep our, our nice edge going. Oh, you have a never ending, ending, a never ending English paper piecing going on now to uh, Domino. Yeah, I that's that's what I have in the in um, the car is my emergency craft kit, and I know I'm never gonna finish that. It is kind of a neat design. It's like these diamonds in a square, and it and it goes together as like a neat like antique looking looking block or vintage looking block. I'm gonna get this guy right in the middle here, and I'm I'm using recycled clothing and stuff for it but I barely ever work on it so I don't know it's just never going to get done but it is nice to know that it's there all right so this is here and like, like I said I'm using that seam esteem 2 which has that sticker edge so normally I would have to press this on but right now I can just temporarily just stick it on because it has a sticker with it too uh, so I can just let this be for now let's cut out these leaves and once we get these leaves cut out, I'm going to break out the uh, light table again, and we'll get these placed and pressed uh, right where they need to be. Oh, you love English paper piecing and think you need uh, your emer you need to make that your emergency craft kit. You so should. It is so nice just having a craft 
that you can just grab and go or that it's always in your purse or something like that. And the nice thing with English paper piecing, like you could have your templates, um, a little thing of glue, maybe a, a tiny glue stick, like one of those sew line glue sticks that look like a, just a size of a pencil. And, uh, uh, you know, a little spool of thread, a needle, and a tiny scissors. You want all the supplies, you want all the materials and the supplies in your emergency craft kit. Don't forget like a scissors. That's annoying when you, <laughs> when you need a scissors and you don't have one. Uh, the other thing I would recommend in an emergency craft kit is a, a little Ziploc bag for your trash. So like when I'm English paper piecing or if you're doing something like I'm doing now and now you got this little piece of garbage. Well, if you're at the doctor's office or somewhere, what are you going to do with that? You can't just throw it on the ground. So if you have a little plastic, a little Ziploc with you, you can throw all those little pieces in there. And you don't have to have the whole project with you either, especially if you're English paper piecing. Just bring the next few pieces uh, or, or throw in a couple extra little pieces of fabric in there. And then you can just uh, adjust as you go. Ooh, these are pretty together. Oh, I like these. This would just be fun applique, just, just that. It's fun using scraps. Uh, Joe, this is block 12. So this is the latest block. Uh, I'm just raw edge applicating it. Um, I started it on Thursday and that's the, this is the only second time we've worked on it. So uh, we got an hour into it or so. Friday, we did uh, our finish it Friday for September. The first Friday of every month we we break out an old project that's been sitting around forever, an unfinished project, and we work on that instead. And so I, I worked on the back of my I Love Home quilt. We just did some improv piecing on that. So that was fun. Felt good working on that project again. And then, like I said, I'm going to be out of town again on Thursday and Friday and then the weekend and then Monday and Tuesday as well. Ooh, I should not have taken that paper off already. Well, I'll just leave this stuck on my finger for now. <laughs> Let's just put a little X in here and uh, uh, an X. Oh, geez, I'm rubbing the edge of that one. We'll put an X on here as well so we can take that paper off. But before we take it all off, so, you know, I don't have these stickers everywhere, let's get the light table out. I'm getting real exact with how I'm, uh, <laughs> where I'm putting the, where I'm placing everything on here. So here's our pattern. She does, she does so and and craft. Um, she actually makes these like really cool puppets. So um, kind of almost these vintage style puppets that are really neat. So that's that's what she's been making and then making clothes and everything for them too. All right, there you guys can see a little bit more. So I'm now uh, with the light table, I can see exactly where all these things go. So since I have this guy stuck on my finger, let's let's get him on. Oops, scooch up a little bit. All right, that's looking good. And we'll press this too, but again, the nice thing about this is that it has that sticky, that um, sticky. This is not a new light table. This is an old light table that I've had for ages. Um, now light tables come in so thin, like light tables are like this thin and they're like $20. They're, they're so, like back in the day, that would have been, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but now they're so cheap and lovely and cordless, a lot of them. So I don't know if this one ever goes kaput, then I'll, then I'll get a new one. But right now it's still working. <clears throat> this is actually, my dad got this one at a dental convention, I think. So it was meant for like looking at, um, you know, x-rays and stuff. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Seth. Oh, Seth, you're, uh, I love your, um, you got the make it so, uh, icon with the, the Star Trek dudes. Oh man, I love that. <laughs> I have that shirt and I just love it so much. I actually just got finished watching 
every single season of um, Star Trek The Next Generation. It was just... Sometimes you need a relaxing show, and for some reason that was just such a relaxing, lovely show, and I don't know, made my day for, for a while. All right, sticking this guy on, too. All right. Um, you know what? Since we're here, why don't I draw on these lines right away? So we got some embroidery to do. Let's see. Water soluble pen. Where are you? Okay, here we go. Here's my water soluble marker. Your light table is so old. Oh, it has legs and a little gut bar. Yeah, so I actually, I put a link to uh, one on Amazon, but there's several on Amazon. So you can check my Facebook post here. In the products used, there'll be a link to, to one. They're so thin. Oh, wow, this is bleeding quite a bit. They're so thin. And some of them are cordless and I don't know, they're just kind of awesome nowadays. Was there an eyeball in here? No. Okay, let's turn this guy off. I think I'm gonna add a little eyeball. In the, in the um, sample, it has an eyeball, but that's actually just part of the fabric. She just fussy cut the fabric so that the circle was right where an eye would be. Uh, and I, that, that was clever. Um, I didn't think to do that. So I'm just going to, since we have to embroider these legs anyway, um, I'm just gonna let's just put it right in the center, kind of like how she did. Maybe I'll just put a little French knot or something there. Oh, it's cute! I love him. All right, let's uh, let's press these um, press these guys. So they're stuck on here because uh, because the the steam esteem two has that sticker, but um, you know we have to permanently press them on. So let's let's do that with the iron. Oh, he's cute. He's a little brown bird in like the bright yellow pretty uh, flower. Aw, cute little birdies. I like birdies. There were so many sparrows outside in our garden, in our garden today. They were just everywhere, like a whole horde of them. And you know, then something would spook them. So like a hundred sparrows would fly up. They're pretty, I like them. Okay, so we are, uh, we got some raw edge applique. We're basically, um, that's basically attached. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go over it with the sewing machine. And all I'm gonna do is with some really light thread, I'm just going to do just a normal uh, little stitches or normal straight stitch around all of it. I'm not doing anything fancy um, with the sewing. Like, I, you know, it would be cool to do like a little, blanket stitch, but my, my sewing machine doesn't have any fancy stitches like this, like that. And I don't really want to do a zigzag because I think the zigzag, um, is going to be too thick. Um, oh, you know what, Robin, I have heard that, that when you iron over these blue lines, they become more permanent. I didn't think of that. So we'll have to see how it goes since I did iron over them. We'll stitch over them, which will hide the lines mostly. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to, We'll have to give it a little, we'll have to get it in water to see, see how it does. But yeah, so I'm just going to go with a, just a, a straight stitch in the light color that we've, that we've been using. So, uh, nothing, um, nothing fancy. And I think it'll be just fine. I think it'll be pretty, uh, without any fancy stitches too. So I don't need my leaders, I think for this. Use a blue, blue, or a green scissors today, I mean. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is tr out outline these. Uh, yeah, I thought of that as I was ironing a little bit, but we'll just see how it goes. I'll see if this comes off still. Um, but I have heard that too. Some people said that I haven't, ex I haven't experimented with that. I haven't tested, I guess. Uh, if it if that's the case um, for me, if it stays on once you iron it or not, so we'll have to we'll have to test that for sure. All right, so I think we'll start. I think we'll just start here with this top top uh, wing piece, and then I'll just keep going up to here, and then I'll stop, and then like jump and do the outside of the bird or something, and then stop again and 
do some of these bottom wing pieces. So yeah, we'll start with the bird. I'm just kind of trying to plan out my game plan. And I think we're going to do what we did with uh, that other applique project where I'm just going to keep my long strings here and um, I'm not going to back tack or anything. I'm just going to sew and then when we're done I'm going to pull the front thread through to the back so it's hidden. So I'm just going about a sixteenth from the edge or so. And again, I just have my super light thread, so it's almost invisible, which is kind of what I'm going for with this guy. Yeah, we'll, we'll turn now. Sometimes I gotta manually turn a little every couple stitches just to get the circle going. This tight circle, half circle. And I just realized I have my shoes on still, which I don't like to have on while I sew, but they're they're like big boots, so I can't just kick them off. So that's annoying. I feel like I have a little less control with uh, my boots on. Okay, so I'm going to, I, I just got to where I ended there. I think I'm gonna just start on this next wing part since it's so close. All right. Ooh, now I'm going the other way. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. It'll be fine. After um, this wing, though, I will take it off of the machine so I can kind of show you what it looks like. And then I'll start up the next spot. So now if you have a needle down, uh, a needle down option on your machine, this sort of applique would be perfect for that. Like for me, I have to kind of inch my pedal or like just tick on my pedal a little bit to get it to the down position and sometimes I miss. So it'd be nice. Oh, see like right there, it almost went up and then I would have had a, I, my stitch would have ended in the wrong spot. So I think, I think we're about right there. Let's pull that off. Okay. So here we are. Um, I, like I said, it's just these, just little straight stitches like that is all I'm doing. I'm not doing any big zigzag, no nothing. So it's super, super subtle on mine, which I think I kind of like. You know, it, it's just depending on what you want it to look like. Like if I did, I could do a black thread and a big zigzag and then it would look like it had this nice big outline which would be kind of cool too but I'm liking uh, I'm liking just uh just let's let's be delicate with this one we're being delicate and pretty yeah all right so I'm gonna try and pull those threads uh to the front oh hair in there so there we go I think I got it yeah and in theory, I think here's where we can, did I get it? Yeah, so I pulled, I pulled those two threads to the back and I think I can just kind of tie those in a little knot too, a little, little square knot to keep those held. So I'll tie it in a, in a knot and then I will trim these a little shorter. And now we're doing that instead of our little back tack to keep it in place. So our, our applique just looks prettier. There's no big stop and start point. I think technically this is how you, uh, if you're entering a quilt into some fancy show uh, that's really technical, this is I think how they want you to start and stop your quilting. They don't want to see the stitches. They want to have them tied off. They don't want to see that you've back tacked or started and stopped. They just want to see it disappear and I think that's kind of like what we did here. So, all right, there we go. Uh, you can't see anything. So I think now let's go, should we do this guy? 
I want to do the bird head first. So we'll, we'll go around to here and then I'll take it off again and then I'll do this part and then take it off, do this part, take it off, and then do this part, which is maybe over the top. I could just maybe connect all these, but I don't know, we're getting picky. So, all right, let's, actually I think I'm gonna start at the bottom of this bird. I think it'll just be easier, an easier direction for me to stitch. So about right there, gotta hold these threads down so they don't suck back into my machine. All right. I'm just lifting the foot just a hair to turn it every couple of stitches. The more often you do it, um, the more gradual your curve will be in theory. I should have maybe switched my foot to a, um, like a clear presser foot so I could see the applique underneath because I'm just kind of guessing where to stitch here. But luckily, you know, we, we use that fusible the Seam Esteem 2, that fusible interface, so uh, our edge should stay stuck on here pretty pretty good. I suppose over time, over the years, it will become more and more raw, but that's, I think, part of the beauty of raw edge applique. All right, there's that guy. We'll just trim and keep going. All right, I think we gotta do this little uh, tail bit here. And I do wanna get these uh, flower bits too yet. I think we'll get all this sewn tonight yet. These are pretty much straight. One more, I think. Okay. And now this other, these other little tail bits. I'm gonna have to deal with these threads soon. We'll deal with the threads from the bird before I move on to the flower part, I think. Oh shoot, get back in there. All right. That's why needle down would be nice. When you start sewing the blocks together, do you put the sashing between the blocks for quilt as you go? I, that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm wondering. So my mom did not do that. So my mom's doing quilt as you go. So she's doing groups of four blocks and she's just butting up those four blocks next to each other. That's what I was gonna do, but the more I think about it, the more I'm wondering if maybe I want to put little sashings in between the blocks before I quilt. Um, so I'm kind of debating doing that. So then if I, okay, so here's the deal. When you do quilt as you go, how you connect your quilted squares. So you're gonna quilt smallish squares together. My mom's quilting groups of four squares. So she's sewing four squares together and then she's quilting them. And uh, uh, so she's not putting sashing in between her four blocks before she quilts it. But the quilt as you go technique has a built in sashing. Um, that's like a, like a half inch, like a, a half inch sashing. Um, or the way that, that we'll be doing it, it'll have a half inch sashing for the, for the actual, when you're quilting, or when you're sewing one quilted part to another quilted part. So if you want it to appear as if the, if you want to appear that there's a, a, a half inch sashing between 
every single block, but you want to quilt blocks of four or blocks of, you know, even more, a whole row, then you will have to put the, sew the little sashing in, in there to mimic the sashing that gets made uh, by doing the quilt as you go. I'm not sure that really made sense, but the quilt as you go, sewing the pieces together, it makes a half inch sashing. So if you want to add a half inch sashing in other spots, just so um, everything matches, you can. And that's what I'm considering doing. Is she putting one fabric square in each of the four block sections? No, she's putting, she's doing four, four blocks and then sewing them together. So it's like a, a it's like four, like a four pieces together, four blocks together. And then she is quilting that segment of four. Let's just do these one at a time. And then that segment of four, after it's done being quilted, she trims it. Um, so it's the size of the four. And then she's doing the quilt as you go, uh, where she, where she uh, puts it onto another quilted piece. Uh, she's putting it onto another uh, grouping of four. So between those groupings of four, so you have a block here of four and a block here of four, in between those two blocks, there will be a um, bit. Oh yeah, so you're right, Linda. So she did, just because the number of blocks that she's doing in her quilt, I think she's adding an extra row. So she's gonna have more than 100 blocks. So what she decided to do is every once in a while, just throw a blank square into um, her groupings of four. So that's, I think that's probably what you saw. Uh, one of her groupings of four had just a, just a um, six and a half inch square in it um, that uh, was just a pattern. It didn't, it, it wasn't a sewn together block. So yeah, so she did do that. And she's gonna do that for a, a, a few places just because, um, just because I think the block, the arrangement that she's doing she wants to add another row, so she's going to have more than 100. There's also a way to quilt as you go where you only have a sashing on the back and not the front. Oh, that's interesting. Mary, I can't see your entire comment on here, so I'm going to have to read it, read it later. Honor the fabric. Yeah, so she's honoring, yeah, that's right. She's honoring the fabric by uh, every once in a while just putting a piece of fabric in it, not a, not a block. I've never really done this, like a whole thing where I, I pull up the threads on all of these things. This is going to take a little, take a little while, but it's kind of neat. Getting all these pretty nice edges. So I might do it where I, instead of sewing four squares together, four blocks together, like my mom did, um, I might so a little half inch sashing in between four blocks and then so then quilt the four blocks together and that will be my my piece before i add it to another quilted piece so i'll still be quilting four blocks together like how my like how my mom is but i might have that little extra sashing bit and I might do little cornerstones too. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it through yet. But I thought it might be nice to do it a little different than than how my mom's doing it. You like the idea of it half inch? I I like the. I mean, I think with the way that my mom's doing the quilt as you go, you basically have to have a half inch for your when you put your quilted segments together. So I thought just a half inch in between each square it would just be tinsy and delicate and kind of sweet because it's such a little it's such a little bit right a half inch and then i thought if i had cornerstones and what cornerstones are is where you have sashing around your blocks but at the corner of each block you have a little you have a little square piece so that would be like a tiny 
half inch square, which I think would be awfully cute. So I might try that. And those might I might do in some of my bright colors. So I might have like these tiny itty bitty half inch squares all throughout the quilt um, of those brighter colors. So, and which goes with how I kind of wanted to do it, like these little specks of color. So uh, that's kind of where my brain's at now. Can you add the sashing around the four blocks and use that as one block? Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do, Patricia. I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna have four blocks next to each other, right? I'm only gonna put sashing in the in-between parts of the four blocks. The other sashing around the four blocks will happen when I do the quilt as you go process. So that's, I think that's my, that's gonna be my, my plan as it sits right now. So when I make the quilt as you go parts, I'm gonna have to add the cornerstones, those little squares too, I think. I don't know, mentally, I'm game planning it in my head a little bit, uh, but that's, that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. Yes, so I'm thinking of, Gina, I'm thinking of doing sashing around, around each block. Uh, that's not what my mom's doing. She is, she is not doing sashing around each individual block. She's only doing the quilt as you go sashing, like that built-in sashing that happens from this process. She's only doing that around her groupings of four. So her quilt is gonna look like she's got these groupings of, of four, which I think will look really pretty too. But I'm thinking of doing it where I still looks like, um, like each block will have sashing around it a little bit. I know it's hard to imagine what it looks like, Patricia. I'm totally with you. Um, that's why I'm. I want to get this done so I can. Um, so I can get started. I want to get started because I think it'll all make sense once we've done one. Oh wow, that got sucked up into the machine a little bit. I think we're okay though. Um. So yeah, I want to. Come on, guy. I want to get this done, this block done, or at least one other block done. It'll be in between this one or that uh, for the love one, because we're almost done with that one as well. Uh, but then I'll have eight squares, and then I can start working on my two segments of, of four. So that's kind of kind of my plan. So I want to get to there. All right, I think I might. I think I might sew up to here. Ooh, the sashing could be two-toned to make it look like a window pane. Ooh, that'd be pretty, Mary. Um, I'm not using a special foot here. I maybe should. Um, it would be easier to if I had a see-through foot because then I could see what I'm doing a little bit better. But I'm just using my normal like quilting foot. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna go up to here, go around the leaf, and then keep going. I'm gonna to have to do these circles separate though, I think. Yeah, maybe I'll just go, well, yeah, I don't know. Well, let's try and get a leaf in here. I just don't wanna start and stop all the time like I did for the bird, but I think that's kinda, of, it's kinda of where we're at now. Kinda of the choices, the choice of um, how I'm doing this uh, applique. You know what, I think we're gonna do the leaf separate too. This is, um, this is such a thin piece, it's a little, it's feeling a little touchy. I, I don't want to veer off and do the leaves. All right, we'll stop there. We'll just tuck in a whole pile of things like we did with the bird. Tie a whole pile of knots. Let's do the other side of this guy to get him down. This is gonna be really delicate though, I think with just, just this um, kind of matching outline here. Ooh, but speaking of applique, uh, machine applique, my mom, I don't know if you guys saw that pillow that we were working on, that pillow of the Highland cow uh, that I made out of all their, um, the wool that they got when they were in Scotland. She finished them, so we actually made two that look the same, and uh, she uh, she did, she appliqued the, the uh, wool 
onto with her machine and she used a bl the blanket stitch setting that she has on her machine. So I don't I don't have that um, setting on mine. Um, but it looked it turned out really pretty. So I'll try and post a photo of that um, on the page here. But man, just that extra little outline just added just a lot of little detail, I think, to it. I feel like every step in all this quilting, every step adds a whole nother layer that makes it so feel so much more finished. I mean, you know when you're working on a project that, oh, the next step, well, you know, I'm closer to the end and it'll look more finished. But the, like, finesse and finishing of it... Uh, that comes with each step is always a little bit of a surprise to me, which is kind of fun. Oop, don't want to go down there. There we go. All right, that leaf, let's do the other leaf. And then we got just those circles to do, and then we got to tuck them all in again. But yay, we'll get this, uh, we're, we're getting all the applique adhered tonight, which is nice. All right, going around. I need to lift it up a little bit. If it doesn't feel like you can turn by turning the fabric, that's when I kind of lift up, lift up my um, presser foot a bit. Oh, you really love the Scottish hairy cows. Oh my gosh, they are so hairy and cute. Um, and they're, I um, I designed the the pillows, the little um, cow design on on the pillows that she made. But I used um, I, I used photos that they took when they were out there. I kind of traced the photos a little bit, and uh, their photos of of those cows. I mean, it was a bright orange hairy cow, uh, and it has its tongue sticking out too. I didn't do that in the pillows, but in the photos, it was just really cute. All right, let's do let's do the. Eh, let's do the inner circle first, then we'll do the outer circle. I don't really have any reason for that. Oh, well, we'll be embellishing this block with embroidery, uh, Gretchen. It's kind of fun, the combo of um, applique and embroidery. I never had really done that before. Um, until the Splendid Sampler won, and I wasn't sure I was going to like it all combined, but I just kind of love it now. It, it's so sweet, all all these separate little, little little layers of texture. That's what it is, really. Just, you know, the applique adds some texture, the embroidery adds some texture. All that adds to a piece. All right, we're around, I think. All right, one more piece, and then we can tuck in all these other pieces. Maybe I should have done that inner circle or the outer circle first, though, because I'm going to be sewing over, sewing over these threads of the inner circle. But oh well, whatever. I'm thinking it'll be perfectly fine. Ah, there. I wanted my needle to be down on that last one, but. It's gonna be fine. This is a little tight curve. So my mom has done curves before. I don't know, um, so skinny like this, but um, she'll have, she'll put like, if she wanted to do a big curve, she'll sometimes put, she'll like take her stiletto and go like this and then just hit the foot pedal and then the whole block will pivot on the point that she's, um, God, I've, I've not tried that before, um, but it looked kind of cool. Oh, and <laughs> speaking of pointy things, I found a pin on the floor, uh, before I came on here tonight, and so who knows how long that has been there. Uh, I don't remember losing a pin that I haven't found later, so <laughs> that's never a well, it's a good discovery before anyone gets stabbed, but I'm like, sheesh. Who knows if there's other ones laying around here that I don't know about. But, save that one at least. 
All right, we are appliqued. So I'm going to do that thing again. We're getting all fancy by um, tying off all the ends. Oh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to be fancy and technical sometimes. All right, I'm just tying those little knots on, on all these again and trimming them down. So next up on this is we just have that little embroidery and I'm thinking that we can easily get done tomorrow. So maybe, uh, yeah, lucky you didn't bite me exactly. Uh, maybe tomorrow, since I think we'll get this guy done pretty quickly with that embroidery, maybe we can even get that other block done too. That would be kind of magic. We could finish two blocks. Uh, in an evening. That'd be a good way to get the week going. Because since I'm going to be gone on uh, um, in the middle of the week here, I don't know if I want to start up any quilting yet, but man, if we could get an extra block out of the way, that'd be pretty sweet. So I'm going to start gathering my quilting supplies though. I'm going to see what I got for batting and I'll bring that up here and uh, we'll uh, see what we need for that and sashing and make some final decisions on that. I think it'll be neat. Oh, you still find Christmas tree needles, oh man. <laughs> and Easter grass. Uh, we actually haven't a uh, we haven't had a Christmas tree in he here a long for a long time. Our living room's so small and it's so crowded right now. I don't think there'd be room for a Christmas tree. We actually have a, like this little evergreen pine tree thing in a pot right now. Then that's kind of getting bigger and bigger. That's kind of our little in-house Christmas tree. Oh, you have in-laws visiting, but you're going to try and catch up this week. Oh, fun. That's where um, I will be. We'll be, um, I'll be visiting my in-laws um, this week. So September is a, is a big out and about month for us this, this time around. Um, but October, I should be here uh, a lot more often. I have one more thing in September, but I don't think it'll affect us. We have a, I have a wedding yet to go to, and uh, um, that's that. But I think September, every single weekend, has been uh, commandeered <laughs> by doing stuff, which is fine. It's just, it's just like. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I just feel super, I don't know if it's introverty, but like, I like having my schedule. I like having my routine. That's the word. I like having my routine. So to have um, like every weekend scheduled up is way not my routine. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be kind of nice to get back in the swing of things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to get out and about before we get snowed in. Exactly, Deborah. This is this is about it. This is going to be our last little traveling about for a little while. So we hit it hard in, in August and September because we knew uh, come October we weren't going to be traveling as much. Oh, you're a homebody. Yep. I hear you, Gina. Almost done tying these little guys off. This isn't so bad. I think it does make it look pretty on the front having all these tied off instead of um, back stitching. Yeah, we have Turkey Day. I'm not sure. I don't know what we're doing for that. I don't know if we'll be. It depends. We have some potential stuff coming up that might hinder that a little bit, but we'll see. Oh, you've been rained in all summer <laughs> there in North Florida. Oh man. So you have a lot of, a lot of them um, at home time. <laughs> you 
you should have a reverse vacation. You should come up um, to Minnesota or something in winter. <laughs> like the opposite of a snowbird. All right, I think we got like four, oh no, we got like six more guys to go here. It's kind of neat though. I like this process, it's kind of relaxing. Oh, Bonnie, that's right, that's exciting. Oh man, February though, holy cow. That's a question mark of what that could be like. <laughs> it could be negative 70 or it could be a nice spring day almost. Eh, but closer to negative 70 probably. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it's indoors. Oh, my parents have gotten into snowshoeing, Gretchen. I have not done it yet, though. So hopefully this year we'll, we'll get out and get to do some snowshoeing, because that'd be fun. Sounds like fun. <laughs> it's one of those things, like that you don't know what how to dress for a wedding like that either because you're gonna have to bring all the warmest stuff that you have. And then who knows, like if it's inside, what the temperature is gonna be like. It might be super hot if they have the heat cranked up. So it's, it's that time of year, all, all winter, all summer really. You need to have, be dressed for, for anything because in summer they pump the air conditioning like nuts in some places, most places. Oh, it can get cold, that's for sure. Blah. I don't want to talk about cold, though, yet. Blah. It's been so beautiful the past few days here. It's been, like, 70s and just gorgeous, gorgeous. Just beautiful. Like, you just want to go outside and, I don't know, lay on the ground and soak it all in. that nice warm beginning of fall um, feeling yet. Before it gets to the, before it feels like it's getting colder and colder, it's where it's still lovely. Ooh, Almanac says very little snow in Minnesota for this year. I'll take it, I'll take it too, Mary. <laughs> Man, yeah, we've had waist deep snow in the backyard. Although it's nothing compared to my brother on this ski hill. Whenever we're like, oh, we got like a foot of snow. He's like, oh, well, we got, you know, six feet of snow or more. <laughs> like eight feet of snow. Just crazy months. Crazy town snow. All right, I got two more to tie off here. Sixties there in New Jersey, yeah. We've had cooler evenings and and um, you know low to mid seventies. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds so pretty. Did I? Where'd this one go? I thought I had pulled that up already. Here we go. I think I might have taken out an extra stitch on this one, but oh well. Oh, it's getting to be spring there in Australia. Oh, spring is still my favorite. It's after winter and it's just getting warmer and warmer and more beautiful and more beautiful. Okay, we have all these buggers tied off. So there we are. That is the applique for the front of this here. I'm gonna get you guys a little higher so you can see. But yeah, so now all we have to do is this itsy bit of uh, embroidery here and we'll come up and we'll do that little eye and uh, oh we still have to trim it down to that um to the six and a half inches but um just real simple this applique i mean i did nothing it was just all that straight stitch but i think it just looks delicate and pretty and i love him i think he's so cute my little pet birdie <laughs> yeah so tomorrow we'll come back in and do that little embroidery bit and then I think we might work on uh, finishing up that um, that needle that uh, that English paper piecing one that we need to put on the needle turn 
or that we're that we're stitching onto the background. I think we'll get pretty far on that one tomorrow too. So yay, it might be a two block day tomorrow. That'd be pretty good. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. Hello, hello. Yes, I love it too. No, Eileen, I think it just turned out so sweet. You know, it's funny, um, on the first Splendid Sampler, I wasn't sure I was gonna like, you know, all the like, cutesy sweet applique blocks or you know with the little characters and the little sewing machines and little um everything on it but they ended up being my total favorites i just love how uh, these little applique all these little animals turn out so sweet but yeah i i like it i think um i think you can see it with the white background i think it all kind of pops i like that little flower guy there too yay so awesome so that is that. We'll get the uh, embroidery, that last little bit on tomorrow, and we will have a finished block. Awesome, guys. So I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. I was a little late of uh, the last few days getting the videos up, but the first video for this is up now, and I will get the uh, uh, my Finish It Friday video up tonight as well, along with this one. So those will be up shortly. And I will be back here tomorrow and we'll finish this guy up. So thanks again. I will see you at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Good night.